Good afternoon, everyone, um, and thank you for joining us for today's session. My name is Anu Rao, and I work in the IT operations space here at Configure Consulting, um, working with enterprise monitoring, um, asset configuration management, automation, and compliance. And presenting with me is Chris Tessie. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today. Um, so just a little background on myself. I'm our enterprise monitoring practice lead. We manage our team of, of consultants and resources within that space. We also come with uh, a wealth of experience and knowledge working as a solution architect, you know, including automation solutions, uh, the CSM and OMI, as well as the community solutions as well. So today, Chris and I will be talking to you about some strategies and operational considerations around building a single actionable interface one where operators can view the real-time health of business applications, where they can detect any events that may present risk, diagnose the cause, and assess the potential impact of outages or performance issues, and also execute remediation workflows and processes. Before getting into today's presentation, uh, I'm just going to do some quick housekeeping. Presented here are the webinar guidelines. So we'd ask you all to keep in mind that the webinar is being recorded and that all lines are currently muted. We'd also ask that you not put your phone on hold or answer another call um, during the session as your music may play to the audience on the call. Also, <clears throat> you'll notice on the right-hand side of your screen that there's a question manager. As we're going through our presentation, if you do think of any questions, please post those there. Um, and we'll address all the questions at the end of the presentation. So before jumping into the agenda here, I just want to take a minute to tell you a little about Configure Consulting. We're an HP software partner focused on solutions that are geared to empower IT operations teams with efficiency, stability, and top performance in the delivery of business services. You'll see listed here are four primary practice areas asset and configuration management, enterprise monitoring, automation, and policy audit and compliance. Today, though, we'll be focusing on enterprise monitoring. We'll start out by talking about the traditional model for enterprise monitoring, one where an organization leverages multiple, often siloed systems for monitoring performance, applications, uh, and also the user experience. We'll then discuss how these different tools can be effectively consolidated and rationalized into a single enterprise-wide view of IT. Following this, Chris will do a live day-in-the-life-of style demonstration of the HP BSM and OMI software. So the demo will focus on um, some of the key aspects of using Operations Manager, um, some of the key uh, dashboarding capabilities, whether it's for an operator-level dashboard as well as executive and network operation center level dashboards. We'll take you through um, you know, using the tool, um, working through events, resolving them, as well as um, leveraging runbook automation. So leveraging the automation tool set to automatically remediate these events um, within the tool set as well too. Following the demo, we'll just uh, recap some of the concepts here around the framework for building a single pane of glass. We'll also discuss um, the CCI data model workshop, which is an enterprise monitoring whiteboarding session geared towards better understanding an organization's data model. As mentioned, questions and answers will be covered at the end of the session, but um, once again, wanted to remind you to please post any questions you may think of in the questions. So in, in working with organizations across North America, we've noticed some pretty consistent trends. And those being really focused on the fact that mean time to repair and business service uptime are becoming very difficult to manage or even measure for that matter as IT organizations become increasingly complex. Often, when there's an outage of business services, it can take multiple teams and processes uh, to even detect that an outage has occurred. Um, and we find that mean time to repair increases rapidly in the hours uh, that it takes to diagnose and remediate the issue. One of the challenges driving this is that different IT silos, such as network, server, storage, uh, and, and other teams, 
monitor events using their own tools and processes. Now, operating without a single cross-domain view can lead to considerable duplication of effort as different groups um, investigate their own platforms for potential triggers uh, of different issues. Also, because these tools don't always play nicely together, we find that um, mean time repairs increase because tasks that could otherwise be automated are uh, handled manually. And this is where that single pane of glass comes in. By consolidating monitoring events and normalizing them based on their impact to business services, IT organizations can respond quickly and accurately uh, to any of the events that do occur. And you'll see listed here just some of the quotes um, reflecting customer experiences and successes uh, from that single pane of glass approach that we've mentioned. This is what we'll be talking uh, about here today. So here we see the uh, solution overview on the left-hand side of the screen that drove a lot of the results um, listed on the right. So this solution here reflects the HP Operations Bridge. This is an industry-leading platform that's been proven to be extremely effective in multi-vendor cross-domain environments. This is the system we'll be talking about today. So looking at the screen from the bottom up, uh, we can see that the first tier in the process is consolidation of event sources into the runtime service model. Event sources can come from um, HP monitoring systems, from third-party systems, for which HP has dozens of out-of-the-box connectors. And they all get rationalized within the runtime service model. This is where we relate metrics to different infrastructure nodes. Uh, and, and those nodes are then mapped up um, based on the touch points they have to business services and applications. Within the event analysis tier, this is what you'll see Chris demonstrate um, being HP OMI. We've got the ability to allow operators, managers, and executives to understand in real time how IT is operating how those event sources map up to overall performance, health, and uptime. There's tight integrations in this process to the service desk, be that the HP service manager or even third-party service desk for ServiceNow, BMC Remedy, et cetera. And there's also uh, what Chris will be demonstrating, strong tie-ins to run book automation. Uh, and, and this facilitates that closed-loop incident process for speeding, um, speeding up remediation. Here we see uh, a reflection of the operational steady state for an environment where enterprise IT is managed and monitored in that siloed manner that we discussed. This is where disparate tools and processes um, are in place for different platforms and where there isn't really a centralized control or visibility. As you all know, this approach presents numerous challenges including the key aspects listed on the right-hand side of your screen. Not having a centralized view of enterprise IT makes it near impossible for executives and managers to accurately answer questions around how is IT performing today or even right now. And so that brings us into this uh, single pane of glass concept. The slide that you're looking at here reflect the foundation of how HP OMI, which by the way, this is what Chris will demo to you shortly, this reflects the foundation of how HP OMI operates. On the left-hand side, we have monitoring systems, which get consolidated into a single platform as we move further towards the right. Once that's done, we rationalize metrics based on their relationship to business applications and to other parts of the infrastructure. These relationships feed into providing holistic views of business service performance. And also, quite importantly, they allow us to do event correlation. We're able to see events from multiple sources and use our correlation engine to understand how those different events are related. And this is what greatly facilitates quick response, 
streamlined operations, and also, as mentioned earlier, the ability for IT operators, managers, and executives to quickly and accurately answer questions around how is IT performing right now. So at this point, I will um, pass the ball over to Chris, who will run you through our live demonstration. Thanks, Anu. Um, so here we have the demo outline. Um, we briefly described a little bit of what the demo is going to cover today, but just going a little bit further detail. We'll talk around some of the topology aspects of the runtime service model. So this is leveraging um, can leverage auto discovery using UCMDB and universal discovery to bring in that topology information. And then on top of that, overlaying the mapping to the applications and services. Um, so this can also be done automatically uh, through automated service maps as well too. So we'll cover some of those aspects. Um, we'll take you through several different types of dashboards. An event operator will typically work in their um, and how they can customize those dashboards as well, too. Uh, we'll walk through a NOC dashboard or uh, IT manager type level dashboard where they can see an overall status of the current uh, you know, IT environment. And then as well, um, a full event management uh, console walk through how you know, an operator will perform their day-to-day -day functions within the tool set. And then we'll also walk through um, leveraging runbook automation uh, to automatically review some of those events as well, too. So switching over to the actual demo environment, what we're starting here with is um, a high-level uh, IT manager type level dashboard. This can also be an executive level dashboard. And what we've done here is um, we've plugged in a, a couple different components into this actual dashboard. And all of these dashboards that can be created in the tool set, uh, you know, they're dynamic in nature. Um, we can pick and choose which components we want to add into the dashboard. We can even use external applications. Um, and other tool sets and plug it into the dashboard as well too so you get these consolidated views that are tailored to um, that particular user's uh, business function. So just starting on the left hand side here, we just want to highlight some of the immediate return on investment that can be seen you know, once you start using uh, OMI. And what we're seeing here is we have statistics from the last, the last couple of weeks within our environment. Uh, you know, we've seen a couple hundred events come in and we see a, re a reduction of events as well too. So we've actually reduced the amount of actionable events by nearly 41% in the last few weeks. And what this means is when events are coming into the console, it could be from a variety of different sources. Uh, you know, we mentioned it could be a network monitoring tool, it could be HP site scope monitoring, various tools. What happens is since OMI has the ability to do that advanced correlation, we can correlate these multiple events together and make it a grouping that is actionable you know, as a single event. So the operator spends less time, you know, Navigating through the events, they're automatically grouped together, and we reduce the amount of actual of actionable events. Um, so this increases, you know, the operator efficiency. They can work through these events more effectively, and we see, you know, the immediate return on investment just by starting to use the, that correlation. In the bottom right-hand side of the screen, um, you know, we have kind of a high-level dispatcher overview. We can see, you know, as the events are coming in, um, you know, what type of severities we're seeing. We see some unassigned events here with we see 16 events that have high criticality, high severity that's assigned to them. So we can see the kind of overall status. You know, we'll see trending as well too. So if we're seeing a lot of events come in, we'll see the event history start to, to trend upwards. Um, as well as if you know, if our operators are, are closing events quickly, we'll see the trend working downwards as well too. So this is really high-level capability to see exactly you know what's happening in the event management console, how the events are being handled um, at more of an IT manager level. Um, picture. So I'll point you to uh, the top right hand side of the screen here and this is bringing in some of those topology aspects that we, we, we mentioned. So leveraging UCMDB universal discovery to bring in topology or we can use BSM connectors to bring that topology into the, the operations management console. What we've done here is we've actually mapped um, our online customer banking service to several business applications. So we have customer lending and online banking application. And what we've done is we've created groupings below that, and we can see the actual infrastructure that supports uh, those applications and services. And we also see the key performance indicators uh, associated to those applications and servers. So we see how that application or that infrastructure is performing as a whole in a holistic uh, you know, service view or application view. And I mentioned that these dashboards are all dynamic, um, and they are 
wired together. So if I select the component on this dashboard, you'll see the topology map here will reflect that, that selection. So on the bottom section of the screen here, we have a grouping of just some of our critical business applications. So if I select online banking from, from this grouping here, it'll navigate our view specifically just to that online banking application. So this allows uh, you know, IT managers, operations staff to quickly pinpoint exactly where we're seeing problems and navigate to it in an effective, and effective manner and it's presented in a, a clean picture that we can use to work through those events. What I'll do next is um, switch over to an operator type level dashboard. So operators have the ability to create their own customized dashboards. They can plug and play the components uh, you know, that they see relevant into the application for you know, the, the work that they're doing um, at that period of time. And what we have here is a couple different components. Um, we have the event console on the right-hand side of the screen, and below that, the event details. Um, on the left-hand side of the screen, we have a watch list. So if, it's, if the organization deems there might, there's you know, five or 10 critical business applications that we're monitoring, we can create a quick watch list. And we can keep an eye on those applications or services, even critical infrastructure within a quick watch list so at a glance they can see how it's performing. And then below that we have a simplified uh, top view which shows us overall how our services and applications are performing in a, in a graphical manner. And as I previously mentioned, all these components are dynamic. Um, they're wired together. So if we select a component um, from either one of the, the dashboards, it'll reflect in the, the other pane. So let me just select this payroll application. And you'll see the top view here navigates to our payroll application. We'll see that everything's in a green status. So we're not seeing any, any major issues with that particular application. And also, on the right-hand side here, we see that the events are filtered as well to that application. So we can automatically filter um, the event panel, these, these other dashboard components, based on what's relevant and what you're selecting at that given time. So if we selected uh, a server in this particular top view, it'll navigate our event console just to the events around that particular server. So this is, it provides a lot of functionality to the operators to quickly pinpoint where the, the problems are and resolve issues much, very effectively within the environment. So Chris, quick question for you here. Um, this view compared to the previous view what types of roles or what types of stakeholders within the organization use both? So for the first dashboard I presented, the IT manager dashboard, typically you know, we might see this up in, in the operations center. Um, an IT operations manager might you know, have it on their desktop available just so they can see you know, how the operators are, are working throughout the day. They have that you know, quick glance and high level of view to see exactly what's going on. And the operator dashboards, as I mentioned, you know, anyone that's working for all uh, events, they'll create their own dashboards. And it, it, it can be depending on their role as well, too. So if you have network admins, they can have you know, a customized dashboard reflecting network topology um, and related views and watch lists associated to that. Same thing for you know, if you want to break it up by database or web admins. We can each have you know, those customized dashboards to reflect uh, you know, the relevant information that's important for them. So I'll, I will touch base a little bit more on the event console uh, coming up. But first, I wanted to show you um, another high-level dashboard. This is the KPI over time dashboard, or key performance indicator over time. And what this is, is this is really a, a knock-level dashboard operation center. You want to have this up on the screen to show. And you want to show your, your, your applications are performing, all the systems are up and available. Um, so what you see here is a listing of some of our, our critical applications. We have customer lending, a finance application, online banking, and payroll. And we have the key performance indicators um, drawn out here in the graph. We can see you know, how it's been performing over the last day, the last week, or, or the month. And you can track that history. Um, so within the last week, overall, between these four applications, we see we have you know, an 87.5% um, availability. So that's pretty good. Um, you know, we might want to try and get that closer to 100, you know, 99.9% .9 at least. Um, but we're seeing, um, if you look here in the graph, you'll see that you know, we have some red um, indicators here on the KPIs. So we have some, some issues potentially in this application for system availability and performance indicators. We're seeing some problems happening. We might, be, you know, we might potentially be hitting an outage. And you notice that in the trend graph as well too. 
you see how we're trending downwards into more of a critical state. Um, even here in the bottom right, the trend graph is well through. So we're, we're starting to hit a, a problem potentially. Um, you know, we might want to look to help remediate that and, and resolve those issues. What we can do as well is if we want to see specifically what one of these KPIs is reporting, we can select that KPI. And in the right-hand side, we see this is due to a system availability monitor or event that came in. So one of our critical servers uh, could be a database server or web server, we're showing as being unavailable. And that's what's attributing to this overall um, you know, status and unavailability of the application. And so looking at this, one of the questions that comes to mind is, what are some of the other event sources or some of the other metrics that um, beyond system availability that can feed into KPIs? So leveraging OMI, um, there are you know, several KPIs available out of the box. You just mentioned a couple here, system availability and system performance. So I'll pull up just a quick list here on the right-hand side. So these are some of the KPIs that are available out of the box. Um, you know, some of the big ones being system performance and availability, also application availability and performance. Um, and overall health, um, business performance. So these are, you know, dozens of KPIs that are available within the tool set out of the box. Um, you have the ability to create custom KPIs as well too. Um, so if you have a, you know, specific KPI that you want to reference here, the capability is available within the tool set. And all of these KPIs are driven by external monitoring tools, event sources. So whenever we integrate a third-party domain manager, um, it can be anything. You know, we mentioned a couple. It could be SCOM. Uh, Microsoft SCOM, several different other third-party systems, CA Spectrum, you know, any of these event sources. Whenever, when you're leveraging the BSM connector framework using those out-of-the-box um, integrations, all those KPIs have already been mapped into um, the tool set. So leveraging those out-of-the-box um, BSM connectors, you have the ability to reflect those KPIs, you know, automatically within the tool set immediately. Uh, the BSM connector also is an open framework, so if there's a third-party system that isn't supported or even something in-house. Um, it's an open framework, so you can create those KPI mappings and, and configuration item mappings within the connector itself uh, to bring that integration into OMI. So what I'll do now is I'll switch over to the actual event perspective. And this is really kind of uh, the event console where an operator might work, you know, in their in their day-to-day -day functions. And this is where, you know, a lot of those key functionalities come out of the tool set. So in the center here, we have you know, the key, the events that are, have been reported into the console. We have them color-coded based on the severity of the event, so a red uh, event being you know, a critical severity type event. And I just want to emphasize a couple of key things here. You know, we mentioned tying dashboards together, leveraging the topology and application maps. What we can do here is on the left-hand side, you see we have you know, our, one of our views, this is representative of one of our application maps, we can quickly pinpoint and focus on you know, events that are related to that particular system or application. So if we wanted to, we can just select our online banking application, and then the event browser will filter to events related to that application. Even further down, if we wanted to see you know, just on a, on a specific server that's supporting an application, you can select the server, and the events will filter down to that particular server. So there's a high degree of flexibility here on how you can effectively work in the console and manage those events. And these are simple views. Um, common views that customers are creating is you know, a view targeted one per critical application that they want to monitor. They can also have views targeted towards different technologies, such as a database view or a network view, uh, web tier view. So you can create these quick views that help the operators you know, pinpoint exactly the events that they want to focus on, uh, and whether it be an app or infrastructure related. And there are other filters, quick filters that are available in the application. If you wanted to, you can create custom filters, you know, looking at any events that have been unassigned. You can also perform quick filters based on the bottom pane here. If you want to see just the critical events, uh, we can click the filter as well as if you want to focus on critical and major events. So really flexible, very easy to navigate um, to the events that may be relevant to that operator. So we'll start, we'll take you through a little bit, um, kind of a day in the life here. Um, so what we'll do is an event will come into the console. Um, at this time, we can choose to have the events automatically assigned to users or groups. So the tool set allows us a, a wide range of flexibility. We can assign the event based off of 
you know, did the event come in on a database server, we might, might want to assign it to a specific group. Also, we can create these automation rules to perform automatically based on, you know, attributes that come across in the event. But the events can also be assigned manually. So I'll walk you through. Um, what we'll do here is just assign the event. So we can assign events to a specific group. We'll just select the Windows support group here. And then we can assign it at that level, or if we want to even select a specific user, we can assign the event to that user. So once that event's been assigned to that particular user, when they log into the Operations Management Console, they have the ability to just quickly filter um, the events that have been assigned to them. So they can do a quick filter, and then they're presented with all the events that are assigned to them. They can also do a filter based on their group as well, too. So when that event comes in um, and the user has it in their console, what they'll want to do is actually start mentioning that they're working on it. So the operator has the ability to um, say that they're working on the event, and that's when this uh, little wrench icon appears here. So what happens is, you know, when an operator is working on an event, it's, it's signaled in the application, so there's no duplication of effort. I mean, you won't have two operators uh, working on the same event at the same time. So they take ownership of it and then that event becomes theirs to work on. And what we have here as well is we wanted to talk about some of the advanced correlation that's available within the application. So in this particular event, we actually have correlated events. So what we have here is uh, three events that have basically been correlated and rolled up to a single event. So there's different types of correlation rules that can be built into the application. We'll give you a couple examples. So this is a simple missing recurrence rule. So say, for example, we're expecting a heartbeat monitor to come in on our SQL server every five minutes or every 10 minutes. What we're doing is we're, we're monitoring to see when those events come into the console. And if we see that we've missed one, we've actually generated a new critical event. So we said, oh, we've missed the heartbeat. There must be something wrong. Let's create a critical event to have someone start to investigate into that. So that's what happened here. Um, whenever I chose to work on a single event, all of these became my ownership. So they were all correlated together, and the operator works on them together. So once the operator starts working on them, he'll eventually reach resolution on it and close the event. But what we'll do before we do that is take you through some of the actions that they can do to perform remediation on that event. So what we have here is some performance graphs. So performance graphs um, can be represented in OMI. So this is based off of the operations manager agents that have been deployed on the, the servers that we're monitoring. And what we can do is we can paint a graph for the operators to quickly pull in metrics and details on that particular host. So if we wanted to pull in um, some CPU details, um, they can simply draw in the metric and, and graphs directly into the application. So they can pick which graphs are relevant to them, what types of details they really want to focus on. We can expand the graphs. They can focus on you know, CPU utilization, memory utilization, and break it down and see exactly how's that system performing at this current time. Um, so you'll see there's a variety of different graphs that can be leveraged. Um, using these performance graphs. You can drill into any specifics on you know, multiple components that are being monitored on that host, uh, whether it's CPU, disk usage, uh, network, uh, file system details. So all these details can be represented in um, you know, the console as they're working through these events, and we have the ability to look through them. One of the other key items um, that we wanted to walk through here is um, the integration to the, to the service desk. So whenever an event comes into the console, uh, we have the ability to automatically open an incident. Uh, we can also you know, manually trigger that incident being open. Um, so say, for example, if we have critical events, we might want to you know, manually or automatically create that incident inside the service desk. So we've integrated uh, the OMI console here to, to HP Service Manager. But as we mentioned, it can be uh, integrated with third-party service desk solutions, whether it's ServiceNow, or um, BMC Remedy, there's multiple integrations available to do this. But what we can do is simply transfer control to Service Manager, the Service Desk. So what this does is it'll actually um, transfer that event over to the Service Desk, create an incident record, and then we have that logged inside of the Service Desk. When that happens, 
we actually see that the event was forwarded to the service desk, the external service desk, and we actually have a drill down into that incident that was created on the service desk. Now this is um, a bi-directional integration as well too. So if an operator inside of the service desk updates the incident, um, you know, if they were to update the incident and close it within the service desk, that will come back can come back to the event console as well too, and we can close the event out as well. So it's a bi-directional integration that happens between the service desk and the event management platform. Um, so we can leverage those updates bi-directionally. And this really what it does is it performs a closed loop incident process. So you have that full loop of the event being reported, the incident being created, and then closing out that incident and event as well. So Chris, uh, as we're waiting for you to switch screens here, uh, I had a question about correlation rules. Can you talk to us a little bit about to what extent out-of-the-box correlation rules are available and um, to what extent organizations create their own and what that process kind of looks like? Yeah, absolutely. So I mentioned one example of a stream-based correlation rule. What I'll do now is show you a topology-based correlation rule. So what we see here is um, some events that could have come in from multiple different monitoring sources. So we have an event saying that one of our network switches are unreachable and also you know, we're getting some ping errors on some of our services uh, behind that switch. So it could be an event coming in from the network monitoring tool, an event coming in from a system monitoring tool. And what we've done is we've correlated them, them, them together based on that topology and relationships that we have in the RTSM. So let me open this uh, correlation rule here just so you can take a look and see how it works behind the scenes. And just to mention, uh, you know, there are dozens and dozens of out-of-the-box correlation rules uh, available within the application. Um, there's several management packs and content packs that will give you common uh, correlation rules for common uh, applications and infrastructure for you know, Microsoft Active Directory, for example, uh, SQL Server, um, Oracle databases. There's a variety of, of out-of-the-box content available for the application. So here's our, our current correlation rule. What we're saying here is if we have a symptom event of a node being unreachable and a symptom event of our, a service being unavailable behind that, we're saying that the cause is actually due to the switch being down. So we've correlated you know, these seemingly unrelated events together. We're saying you know, we have these symptoms of servers being unreachable or unavailable, and the real root cause is you know, that switch has gone down um, for whatever reason, maybe a power outage. Um, so we've correlated those events together and worked on it individually. And this correlation engine, it's, it's very rich. Um, you can create very simple correlation rules such as this or multiple uh, you know, in-depth topology-based event correlations that can traverse multiple levels of, of relationships within the system. Um, but it really allows a rich correlation engine. You can pretty much correlate any type of topology um, leveraging the TBAC rules. And you know, like I mentioned, there's Lots of out-of-the-box content that covers most of the uh, you know, major topologies um, for most vendors. And you know, users have the ability to create their own custom correlation rules as well, too, to suit whatever needs they may have. Okay. So what I'll do is um, once an operator starts working through uh, you know, those events, we mentioned they have abilities to launch a variety of tools. You know, we showed you the performance graph. But realistically, in this action panel, we can integrate multitude of tools, uh, different ways that operators can you know, effectively do that work. Um, we can integrate it to you know, third-party systems and tools for them to do launch external actions. Um, there's a lot of flexibility here on, on customizing how the operators you know, work through those, those events. What I'll show you here is actually leveraging HP's operations orchestration. And this is to perform. Uh, run book automation to automatically remediate that event. So what I've done is just selected the Windows Health Check uh, operations orchestration flow here. But this can be a multitude. There can be, you know, there's dozens of out-of-the-box flows available. You can create custom flows to pretty much meet any needs required. Um, you can create simple ones where if a, an event comes in saying a service has gone down, you can create a flow to automatically restart that service. You can trigger it automatically in the tool set or have the operator trigger that as well too. But what we'll do is we'll run this uh, health check flow 
what it'll do is it'll go through the various uh, you know different options here throughout the, the actual flow. You'll see it's going to check a couple of different components in the server, such as you know pinging it, check the system uptime, check the memory availability, a bunch of different you know components that we want to look at to make sure that the system is, is available and performing as expected. And creating these flows, it's it's really simple. It's it's essentially drag and drop which components you want to execute, um, and then connecting them together. So you can really create an operations orchestration or a runbook automation flow to really do anything. Um, there's integrations to many of the HP products as well as third-party integrations can be used um, within operations orchestration as well too. So you could perform a full closed loop um, update leveraging this tool set. So for example, we have the event come in, we trigger the operations flow. The operations flow goes out and resolves the event, you know, whether it's restarting the service, or doing some other work on that server. And then the operations flow can actually go back into the event management platform, resolve the event, and close it out, as well as even update the service desk if you'd like. So you have the full capability to do all those updates leveraging runbook automation. So this is you know, just a simple example uh, to show you some of the true power that's available within it. Um, as I mentioned, the flows are very simple to create. Um, you have integrations to many different systems. And it's really a Swiss Army knife, we like to say. Um, all the capabilities there, it can do essentially anything to help remediate the events automatically. So lastly, what I'll do is I'll show you, you know, once an event's been resolved, uh, the operator can then resolve the event, and then eventually they can close it. So this one, actually, this is giving us an error because we're trying to resolve um, the symptom event. We really need to resolve the cause event. So it'll tell the operator, if you resolve the cause event, which is this event here, then all the symptoms will go away um, from that event. So when we resolve one of those events and close them, that will um, kind of complete the life cycle on that application or that particular event. So let me just show you an example. We'll resolve one, and then we can close the event. So this really, I mean, we wanted to focus on some of the key aspects of you know, the powers of OMI. And this really just touches the surface of, of what's really available within the tool set. Um, you know, we've only focused on a couple of key aspects of, of what's available in the application. There really is extreme flexibility. The tool can essentially handle events you know, multiple different ways. Um, operators can customize it the way they need to suit their needs. Um, and also, you know, as I mentioned, there's lots of integrations available to uh, third-party systems and tools to help increase their efficiency. Okay, great. Chris, thank you so much. Um, the demo that you just saw that, you know, um, Chris covered through so, so quickly and so efficiently uh, goes across so many different areas that I know hit home for a lot of the folks on the call um, from consolidating events viewing the impact of those events, um, acting on those events, and also, of course, the, the run book flows that are you know, so clearly powerful. We wanted to recap some of the concepts discussed today. Uh, first off, as we've emphasized, um, a big part of what makes this consolidation process streamlined is the dozens of out-of-the-box integration connectors that are available. We're focusing on out-of-the-box because there are so many of them and they've proven to be really effective for a lot of the organizations we work with. Um, but also important to note, you've got the capability to create um, integrations where out-of-the-box connectors aren't in, aren't in place yet. The role-based nature of the dashboards is really important. Um, the impressive IT manager dashboard that we saw at the beginning is really nice and provides some quick and critical answers for your managers or your executives, but it may not be as useful for an operator. And it may, the operator dashboard may not be as specific as, um, let's say, a network engineer needs. And so what we hope we showed you is a variety of widgets um, that can be readily dragged and dropped into a dashboard that suits um, the needs of a specific role within the organization. Uh, we showed you some of the widgets, but keep in mind, there's hundreds uh, available within the system. The ability to visualize impact across shared services is certainly the key to a lot of what you saw today. 
that comes from the data model within the RTSM. Um, this is that model of infrastructure to the business applications that we use across event correlation as well as performance dashboards. And of course, one thing that's really important as uh, organizations move down the maturity path of event management is the ability to reduce reliance on tribal knowledge. By building automated response workflows and processes, um, tying in with different services such as IP service management, um, we're, we are truly able to reduce reliance on tribal knowledge and use automation effectively um, to reduce consensus. Now I'd like to just talk to you about Configure Consulting's data model workshop. This is something we view as um, the first step in moving down this path. And what it is, is a half-day whiteboarding session where we kind of get all of the key internal stakeholders into a room and take, invent take inventory of um, what are the current tools and processes that are driving event management in the organization. What role have they played with um, supporting outages in the past? And where are their opportunities to get them to work together more, more effectively um, to improve the performance relative to targets of IT operations as a whole? This is something that we found to be really effective just in helping organizations try to understand uh, for each organization specifically, what is their desired end state or what is the path they'd like to move down um, from a blueprinting perspective in terms of a data model? How should data flow together uh, to make, to drive results for them? So we'd encourage you, um, if this does sound like something that fits your needs and fits where you are in the event management process, we strongly encourage you to contact us um, for more information. There. So at this point, we are ready to take um, any questions. I see we've got a bunch of questions here in the question pane. Um, and as we're running through these, if you do think of any others, please do uh, note them down. We've got a few questions coming in regarding um, third-party systems. So one is, if we have, so if we have a CMDB in service now with all the relations already, would it be possible to use that? Yeah, absolutely. So leveraging the HP um, Universal CMDB uh, and Discovery platform, there is a bi-directional integration to ServiceNow. Um, so this is for topology synchronization. So we can, you know, bring in those configuration items and topology from ServiceNow into the CMDB and in turn uh, the runtime service model for OMI. And also, you know, it is, as I mentioned, is bi-directional, so we can push CIs into ServiceNow if, you know, we're finding uh, ServiceNow is missing a specific set of data that, you know, we might have had discovered or brought in from, uh, you know, an event, external event source uh, or topology. So those integrations exist between the CMDBs for CI synchronization and as we mentioned as well too, the event management uh, synchronization to ServiceNow to create incidents as well too. So that is available um, out of the box as well. Okay, great. The next question here, another ServiceNow question. Um, does the ServiceNow to OMI integration offer the same functionality as the SM integration that was demoed? And how is it different? Yeah, absolutely. The integration works uh, essentially the same as the service manager um, integration. As I mentioned, it's a bi-directional integration between OMI and ServiceNow. So you have the ability to create an incident in ServiceNow based off of an event um, in the operations console and vice versa, have that update um, from that incident in ServiceNow come into um, operations manager. So these are driven by, uh, you know, a variety of scripts, but essentially, um, you know, it does work uh, relatively the same. Okay. And what appears to be our final question is, we're a legacy ops manager uh, user. Is there, what is the path to migrating for a legacy customer? So this is actually a great, great question. Um, so with OMI version 10, um, it's really going to be replacing the legacy operations manager console. So OMW, OMU, OML, if you're a legacy customer, there's actually um, licenses, uh, free license migrations that's available for OMI 10. Um, so we're wanting you to migrate into the newer platform, leverage OMI and all the enhanced capabilities that I can perform. 
Um, this is what's known as the OM to OMI uh, evolution program. So feel free to reach out and, and ask us some more questions if you need more details on how to go through that migration and evolution. Okay, thanks Chris. Um, so with that, everyone, that wraps up the question and answer session. As Chris mentioned, if you do think of any questions following the presentation, please don't hesitate to contact either of us. We want to thank you for taking time out of your afternoon. I know for some people on the call, it's lunchtime, so we do appreciate your time and your attention, um, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks, everyone, and have a great afternoon.